Welcome back to week three of this Bible study series. We are still talking about the book of Esther. We have learned a lot of things here. Once again, this is Be the Ram Global Fellowship. I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. And we are on week three of a series entitled The Book of Esther, What We Can Learn. Let us pray. God, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for blessing us with the new members that we have currently gotten. Thank you for keeping us healthy. We thank you for what didn't happen to us. Sometimes we're, we're too, uh, too focused on what we got, the money, the income. But we don't focus on those protection areas that you give us when we're not paying attention. We don't focus on the accident that we did not get in. We don't focus in on the stroke or the heart attack that we did not have, the robber that passed our place. So in this moment, we just want to thank you for what didn't happen. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask that you clear our minds and remove the distractions so that we can have a, a learning opportunity and experience today. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I'm glad you're still with me after that prayer. We're not going to waste time. We're going to get right back into the word. I'm excited. You know, uh, we learned a lot uh, in the book of Esther, and I'll give you a little recap. You know, there was a king named Xerxes, and he had a wife named Vashti, or Vashti, depends on how you pronounce it, you know, tomato, tomato. And his wife did not honor him by coming to his party and flaunting around. She's a very beautiful woman. So he was around a lot of other leaders in the community, and they pretty much gave him the advice to replace her. And he listened. So he uh, had a, what we call pretty much, let's say a, let's say a bachelor show or a, uh, who's going to be the best bride reality show. And a lot of the young ladies in the, in the area, they tried out and he, he ended up picking somebody named Esther. Now, Esther was a Jew. Esther had a cousin, no, an uncle who raised her named Mordecai. Mordecai gave her the advice not to let the king know. Now there was another guy named Haman, one of the king's best men. And Haman was elevated within the kingdom. But Haman had an issue because Mordecai refused to bow down to him. So every time uh, Mor uh, Haman left work, left the palace, he would see Mordecai standing out there at the gate and everybody else would bow but Mordecai refused to. Mordecai was standing at the gate because he would always come by to look out and you know hear of a word for his niece which he also called his daughter. So he couldn't come in but he did step come by. He didn't forget about her. So now Haman is very upset and he goes to the king and he decides that he's going to get a decree written that all of the Jews were going to be killed on a certain day because he was upset because one Jew would not uh, bow to him. So he was honored and everything else. And then when all the Jews find out, they're upset, they were sad, they were crying. Mordecai got word to Esther and eventually she said, all right, I'll go talk to the king. And her plan was to have a banquet. She had a banquet and within that banquet, she's gonna ask you know, how she can have this thing rectified, have it reversed. We all need a little bit of reversal sometimes. So at this point, where we stopped last was banquet number one they had, and Haman left the banquet ecstatic because the queen said, I want to have another banquet tomorrow. And what happened there was he left happy, but then he ran into Haman. Mordecai, who was sitting at the gate again and would not bow. And then he got all furious and he went home to his wife and his friends and said, what should I do? The wife gave him the uh, advice to build a thing to hang uh, Mordecai from. And that's where we left off. We'll pick up in Esther chapter six. I'm going to share my screen here. I already got it up. It says Mordecai is honored. That same night, the king could not sleep. This is the same night that uh, Haman and his wife gave him the idea to build this thing to hang Mordecai from. The same night, 
the king could not sleep. So he told a servant to bring the history book and read it to him. The book of history of the kings lists everything that happened during the king's rule. So the king can't sleep. He said, I need to see this book. The servant read the book to the king. He read about the evil plan to kill King Xerxes. That was when Mordecai had learned about Bictha and Teresh. These two men were the king's officers who guarded the doorway. They had planned to kill the king, but Mordecai learned about the plan and told someone about it. Then the king asked, what honor and good things have been given to Mordecai for this? The servants answered the king, nothing has been done for Mordecai. Haman had just entered the outer area of the king's palace. He came to ask the king to hang Mordecai on the hanging post Haman had commanded to be built. The king said, who just came into the courtyard? I'm going to freeze right there. I'll come back. But I just want you to see the parallel of this story here. You have uh, Mordecai who is standing his ground. He's not going to bow down to Haman. So a plan is being put up to hang him. At the same time that Haman is walking into the palace to tell the king that he wants to hang Mordecai. At that point, the king is looking for someone to tell to bless Mordecai. So sometimes things may seem like they're going bad, but at the same time in your life, they're also going good. So one person, the devil, has a plan to take you out if you are influential to God's kingdom. If the devil isn't messing with you, that should let you know something. But if he is, that means that you are influential to the kingdom of God. Now, at the same time that you see all hell breaking through in your life, you see people coming at you left and right, you're getting tempted here, you're getting tempted there. At that same time, God has a plan to elevate you. So don't get discouraged when you're only seeing one part because keep in mind, Mordecai does not know that the king is about to bless him because Mordecai did what he did because he did, does what he does. When you decide that you're going to step up and be a blessing to someone, you're going to be the ram in the bush. Uh, Mordecai was the ram in the bush for the king because it was the king's own men that were planning to take him out. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it's those people who are closest to you that plan to take you out. And it may be someone that you least expect that will step up and have your back. I'm sure the king did not expect Mordecai to have his back because once again, Mordecai is a Jew. So why would a Jew want to help someone in the kingdom? Let's continue here where we left out. Who just came into the courtyard? The king's servant said, Haman is standing in the courtyard. No, we know why Haman's in the courtyard. So the king said, bring him in. Verse 6, when Haman came in, the king asked him a question. He said, Haman, what should be done for a man the king wants to honor? Haman thought to himself, I'm thought he's like, oh, this is about me. He about to honor me. Who is, who is there? that the king would want to honor more than me. I'm sure the king is talking about honoring me. So Haman answered the king, do this for the man the king loves to honor. Have the servants bring a special robe the king himself has worn and a horse the king himself has ridden. Have the servants put the king's special mark on the horse's head, then put one of the king's most important leaders in charge of the robe and the horse and let the leader put the robe on the man the king wants to honor. Then let him lead him on the horse through the city streets. As he leads him, let him announce this is done for the man the king wants to honor. So he gives him this elaborate plan 
to honor someone. Because keep in mind, he is thinking that he's talking about honor himself. What this does, what this says to me is that even when God is about to bless someone else, you need to be just as happy that your neighbor got blessed as if it were you. Because it's not always going to be you that gets the blessing. But don't be the person that someone brings good news and everybody's clapping and you're looking sad. See, when you're not being the one getting blessed, you still need to be happy. Because you need to be happy that someone else got blessed, that there are blessings around. If he's getting blessed or she's getting blessed, you know that you have an opportunity to be blessed. Don't just think it's all about you. So the king said, go quickly. Get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew. He is sitting near the king's gate. Do everything that you suggested. Can you imagine how Haman's heart dropped when he heard that? So your enemy is being made to bless you. And keep in mind that Mordecai did nothing different than he had always done. See, God will position you to be a blessing and to be blessed. And your blessing this just dropped in my spirit, will come in the same place that you bless someone else. It may not always be like that, but in many cases, in this case for sure, the same place that he was a blessing, he got blessed. See, it said that Mordecai was at the king's gate. And when he was at the king's gate on his post, watching out for his daughter, he overheard the king's man planning to kill him. And in that place, he was able to bless the king by saving his life. He didn't get anything in return. He didn't ask for anything in return. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to do this so the king going to favor me. He didn't do that at all. He blessed the king because that's what he wanted to do. And then he continued to come back on his post. So he could have gotten salty and said, I'm not going to be outside this king's gate. And I bet you next time they talk about him, I'm going to let him get killed. He didn't do that at all. He continued to be on his post and look out for his daughter. And now he's out there. And the reason that he's not going to bow down to Haman, because I'm not here for that. I'm not, I ain't even with all that. I'm here for one reason, one reason only. Look out for my child. Okay. So as he's out there again, at the king's post, at the gate, then the king was able to say, now you go to that place. You go to the gate because that's where he is and you bless him. So I just want to encourage you, stay where you are. Stay in the blessing place. There are regions and areas that are blessed and they're blessed because you begun the blessing. So stay there. Don't get so impatient that because you don't see progress, because you don't see movement, because you don't see a return on your investment that you cash out and move on, stay there. A blessing is coming. Let's continue. So Haman got the robe and the horse. Then he put the robe on Mordecai and led him horseback through the city streets. Haman announced ahead of Mordecai, this is done for the man the king wants to honor. After that, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman hurried home with his head covered because he was embarrassed and ashamed. Let me highlight this for you. Mordecai went back to the king's gate. So after being honored, he went back on his post. See, you cannot allow the celebrations of others from others. You can't allow you being lifted up. You can't allow you being elevated to make you stop doing your job. Once you are celebrated, once you are paraded across the city for being great, you still got to go back to work. You still have to go back to your ministry. You still have to go back to your calling. See, one man left embarrassed. The other man left honored but went back to work. So Haman told his wife Zeresh all his 
friend and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His wife and the men who gave him advice said, if Mordecai is a Jew, you cannot win. You have already started to fall. Surely you will be ruined. Mm. So where is your great advice now? While they were still talking to Haman, the king's eunuchs came to Haman's house. They made Haman hurry to the party that Esther had prepared. See, now he don't even have time to get himself together. He don't have time to figure out what, what, what am I going to do? So now you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Mordecai is a Jew and you just had to lift him up. Let's go on to ver uh, chapter 7. Haman is hanged. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so the king and Haman went to eat with Esther. Then as they were drinking wine, they're always drinking here, on the second day of the party, the king again asked Esther, Queen Esther, what is it that you want to ask for? Ask anything and it will be given to you. What do you want? I will give you anything, even half of my kingdom. Then the queen Esther answered, King, if you like me and if it pleases you, please let me live. And I ask you to let my people live too. This is what I ask for. So the first thing that she asked for was her life. She didn't ask for a bunch of extra stuff. She didn't ask to be paraded around. She didn't want half of his kingdom. She just said, I want my life. Now, I wonder how Haman is feeling while this is happening. Why? I, I, because he doesn't know what's really going on. And this is because my people have been sold to be destroyed, to be killed and wiped out completely. If we just had been sold as slaves, I would have kept quiet because that would not be enough of a problem to bother you, the king. Then King Xerxes asked Esther, who did this to you? Where is the man who dared to do such a thing to your people? Esther said, the man against us, our enemy, is the wicked Haman. And then Haman was filled with terror before the king and queen. The king was very angry. He got up, he left his wine, and went out into the garden. But Haman stayed inside to beg the queen to save his life. He begged for his life because he knew that the king had already decided to kill him. So... Haman was already set up to be killed. He didn't have an opportunity to run. The only thing he could do at this point was beg for his life from the same person or the same people that he set up to kill. Understand, my people, that sometimes when the enemy comes out to get you, when the enemy has a plan to take you out, you don't have to respond. You don't have to get people told. You don't have to get nasty and mean and ugly. Only thing you have to do is continue to keep your virtue. You continue to do what you've been doing. And God will orchestrate your enemy's defeat. See, it was so well orchestrated that the way Esther pulled this thing off is that she made sure that the enemy would not have an ability to run. See, the way God works is that he will surround your enemy. See, your enemy thinks they have you, but they're looking at you and they don't see the police at the front door the police at the back door, the two at the windows. See, they have nowhere to run. So while he's begging for his life, he knows the king is outside, probably deciding how I'm going to kill him. How am I going to take this joker out? So what if the king has mercy on him? He probably won't. But what if he does? Or what if... Haman would have had mercy on Mordecai. He wouldn't have been in this situation. 
See, this is about mercy. This is about faith and mercy. We know that God is not mentioned in this story. And I think it is important to understand when God is not in it, mercy and grace is not there. See, God isn't in it. Haman didn't show mercy and the king won't show mercy. But God does. We serve a God that you can make mistake after mistake after mistake. And God's mercy is everlasting. And I'm not saying that you use it up like it's a game. But please understand that mercy isn't earned. It is a gift that is given. So if you can't earn it, then you can't unearn it. You can't lose it. The mercy of God is everlasting. Let's continue. Just as the king was coming back in from the garden to the party room, he saw Haman falling on the couch where Esther was lying. The king said with anger in his voice, will you attack the queen even while I'm outside the house? So this man is begging for his life, but it looked like he was attacking the queen. So he just all out of luck. As the king, as soon as the king had said this, the servants came in and killed Haman. They wasn't playing. One of the eunuchs who served the king was named Harbona. He said, a hanging post 75 feet tall has been built near Haman's house. Haman had made it so that he could hang Mordecai on it. Mordecai is the man who helped you when he told about the evil plans to kill you. Then the king said, hang Haman on the post. So they hang Haman on the hanging post. He had built for Mordecai. The king then stopped being angry. So as we close out, I want to leave this with you. Please understand, it is okay to show mercy to your enemy. You don't have to pop back. You don't have to snap back. If God is going to take care of them, let God be the one to take care of them. You don't have to be the judge, the jury, and the executor. If it is in God's will for them to be taken out, God will do it. Also, those plans that you are plotting, if you do that, understand when you plot against somebody, those same things that you build up, those walls that you build up, those hanging posts that you build up to take someone out just might be the thing that takes you out. Now, how crazy would you look if what you built up to take somebody else out ends up being the thing that you fall from? See, we put up walls to keep other people out. But what happens when you are kept in? When you have a wall of mental, uh, a mindset that says, I will not associate with someone on that level. See, when you teach all of your people that, Oh, we don't deal with people that don't have a certain income. If we don't deal with people who don't look like us, who aren't from our area, we don't mess with them folks. What happens when you become one of them folks? What happens when you make your way out? You get your big blessing. And now they don't want to mess with you. Or if you're on top and you have a situation where you have a Job situation where you're brought down and now you're looking like, hey, it's still me. And they're like, no, we don't mess with folks like you. It's not always the death of our physical death. Sometimes there's death in our mind. There's, there's things that die in our life. Our happiness dies as a result of something we did. Our freedom dies. Our, our love dies. It's not all about a physical death, but make sure that you show mercy and make sure that you're not continuously building up things to take others out because it may be what takes you out. Now this story does go on and it does get better. So I hope that you come back next week and fellowship with us. I want you, if you aren't caught up, make sure you go back to the other messages and find out what went on and make sure you're here next week. But let us pray, God. We take this moment 
to speak with you. We are your humble sons and daughters. We love you. We thank you for just keeping us. We thank you for the opportunities that you've given us. And we just want to say a special prayer once again for all those in the education field. There are a lot of us, and, and it's not all good. Some of us are at our, our, our wits end. We're getting sick. We're having to leave work. And it's all because of stress and, and being overwhelmed. But God, you said that you would be there for us. You said that any there is no burden that you won't lift. So we're asking that you lift those burdens. We just cast it over to you. And we know that you will take care of us. You will be our rock. You will be our shoulder that, that we can cry on. You'll be the ladder up against the wall that helps us elevate out of this situation. Once again, we pray for mothers. We pray for wives. We pray for our, our administration, the president and the vice president. We pray for the truck drivers right now, God. Bless them as they're on the roads. We pray for those who are unemployed and looking for employment but just cannot find it. I ask that you give them strength not to make poor decisions, not to go out and do something reckless that may, you know, hinder their future. Don't allow them to mess up their future in the midst of this pandemic. God, you have everything in your hands and you have planned those out. We pray for Faith Walk, the, the church that we came out of, God. Continue to bless them as they are face-to-face, -face, God. Keep, keep the, the, the sickness away, God. Love, don't let anyone get sick while they're in those services, God. I, I, we pray a, 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 uh, a hedge of protection around Bishop Collins and her family, the Deacon Collins, God. Those who have lost loved ones in, in the last week, God, be with them. God, give them peace in these unpeaceful days. We pray for all those who are in leadership positions, who have to make decisions to, or we have to let somebody go that, that may need their job. We pray for those who, who are having to decide whether to take that loved one off life support. It, there, there are difficult decisions that must be made. And we just ask you to give us strength. We do not forget about the young people, God. They're struggling as well, and some don't know how to communicate it. They don't know how to say, I'm overwhelmed. They don't know how to say, I need some self-care. So I just pray that you strengthen them right now. Give them a little bit, a little bit of energy. God, bless us. Keep us. Save the unsaved. Find the backslidden. Lift them up. And just let us go in peace. In your name we pray. This is Pastor Coach McKissick. I appreciate you for being with us right now. Be the Round Global Fellowship. Make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. Make sure you go to our website, be the realm.com. If you want to donate, if you want to give an offering, if that is your ministry, we have a cash app, dollar sign BTR Global, or you can go to our website, be the realm.com backslash giving. But until next time, I challenge you to be the ram in the bush and win the 97%. God loves you, and so do I.